We're here with Staff Sergeant Kazanis, a member of the Army Reserve Marksmanship Program. We had an opportunity to compete in a match in Canada uh, called CAFSAC, and one of the um, series of the events hosted at this competition were a series of surprise matches or surprise courses. So prior to that, we shot a series of static or, or fixed courses. How, how did that work? Uh, the K the KD shoots. Yes. Yeah, you know what you're doing out there. I mean, all right, I'm shooting a, uh, X number of meters and apply my dope, judge the wind, and put them in the middle. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Right. And then of course we did pistol matches in in the same vein. And how did those work basically? Same way. Yeah. Same way. Paper match. Yeah. You okay. know what you're dealing with. So those were static, fixed, square range type courses. Everything was known in advance in terms of the number of rounds fired, when you were going to go empty, and all that. How did that contrast with the surprise courses of fire? Uh, the surprise courses of fire differed substantially from the paper matches. Uh, with the paper matches, I mean, it's it's a judge of your marksmanship skill, mm -hmm. maybe your wind judgment, you know, uh, but that's about it. With the other courses of fire that we shot, uh, we didn't know what we were getting into. Uh, it was a mystery. Sure. They went to great lengths to ensure it stayed that way, and mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, it, when we jumped into it, uh, that's when we found out what we were dealing with. So I felt that that was more applicable to what you would find in the real world. I mean, we never know what we're going to deal with when we kick open that door or, or what have you. Right. you know. Uh, and that requires some judgment and some an quick analysis and decision making. And that's exactly what I saw with that course. Uh, you know, and, and you're you're racing against the clock on top of it you know so there's some match pressure there and you were forced to make quick decisions and also shoot straight right. so i thought that was uh i thought that was an awesome course of fire uh, those three matches we shot okay. now with those particular courses had no idea in advance how many targets where they were the layout of the facility or the maze yeah. um, the number of shots needed to fire when you were done or anything else were there any having done the static courses prior to that literally a, the day before were there any holdovers or training scars that you noticed amongst yourself or any of the other competitors from the square range to the surprise course not from a paper match to surprise course it was an actual it's a matchism built into those courses of fire okay uh, they gave us uh x number of rounds I think it was, you know, three or four 10-round magazines. I, I don't remember exactly. But uh, the pop-up targets, we were told prior uh, that we had to engage with two rounds apiece, no matter what. Like, okay, well, two rounds apiece. And then you get in there, and you hit it with your first shot, and it goes down. And, and you're like, all right, target's down. Move. Oh, I got I to gotta shoot this other round and, uh, at a target that's already laying down. Pew. You know? Okay. Uh, and then carry on. So I thought that was kind of silly okay uh, but other than that I mean that was it so that was more of a course design problem than it, uh, than a, an issue with the competitors making a mistake yeah yeah I mean we were allowed to conduct our own reloads uh, as we saw fit and everything else and you know our movement techniques and everything uh, that was all up to us okay did you notice with yourself or any of the other competitors where they were like doing an unload and show clear where they would shouldn't have because of some bad habit or something um no, I, I, did, I didn't see or, or hear about that at all, no. It may have had the potential to slow someone down, you know, built, building in that muscle memory, right. but, uh, but did I didn't have an issue with it, no. Okay, so you weren't aware of anyone, we weren't aware of anyone else doing that? Uh, no, I could see how somebody who's relatively inexperienced, you know, may do something like that because it's, you know, it's new to them and they've built that muscle memory, but um, uh, as far as we we're concerned on it I didn't hear or see that no so as far as the electronic target portion of those surprise courses what do you think might have been a fix to eliminate that match matchism you know I think an easy fix for that would have been to give us our rounds and say shoot the target until the target goes down and you know it may have been the same for everybody Roger got it that's good uh, fair match and all but going into it we don't know what we're up against right pop all right it went down with the first one carry on but uh you know i may have been there you know having to analyze all right did the target go down make that decision and then move on you know forces you to analyze the situation think about it right. you know uh, 
So if the, if the target had been programmed to say go down after X number of rounds, even though none of the competitors knew that in advance, given that that's a a possible way to use those targets you think that would have been a good improvement there oh yeah that would have been a valuable training aid because i mean we're dealing with uh you know uh turning solid uh into gas and propelling uh you know uh precious metals <laughs> copper and lead down a pipe right. at a high rate of speed into the human body uh, i mean ultimately that's what we do and uh the human body is unpredictable and sometimes when you shoot somebody they don't go down don't cooperate or, yeah, they're not cooperating. Do the thing, please. You know, uh, and so you have to follow up. It'd be prepared to follow up with that. And so I think that that's something they could have built in and that would have been uh, beneficial. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Thank you.